Okay, so it's been a while since I actually started this one. I bought it when it launched on Switch because I think at the time it just seemed like the best option was Switch or my computer was having issues or something. But I had never played Rock and Roll Racing or any of these older games, and I played Rock and Roll Racing, and I don't know if I was just really high or if I just had like a nostalgia like reverberation and remembered being a child. But I really, really enjoyed Rock and Roll Racing, and I cried like a moron. I don't know exactly why. Um, but the combination of the music, and they actually got the license tracks, uh, like the like the full studio quality or CD quality or whatever. And then I played some of Lost Vikings, and that was enjoyable. It's cool. It's like it. Uh, it's like a puzzle game with like some action elements, and you control three different characters. I'd say it's mostly a puzzle game, which makes sense because if you watch the special features in here. Uh, it talks about how it's, it started as, like, a Lemmings clone, and then they realized a bunch of little Vikings was not going to look great on a TV screen, so they made three of them instead. Um, and Rock and Roll Racing is a blast, and I loved it, and it's really simple, but I like the upgrade system, and I like that all of these games have password systems, so you can keep track of shit and keep playing. Apparently they had, like, hardcore memory restrictions, so, that's probably why they did, uh, passwords. Um, probably also because, like, I think they used, uh, save batteries back in the day, even for SNES, SNES cartridges, maybe. I might be wrong. Uh, don't attack me. Um, I really like Blackthorn. It's obviously, you know, a callback to game, like, Flashback. Uh, maybe, like, old Prince of Persia. It's really interesting that you would think it's rotoscoping, at least it looks similar, and then the artists had to redraw everything anyway, so they were like, fuck it, let's just animate in 16 frames, because that's so much easier than trying to redraw over rotoscoping video shit, like, meticulously. And I'd really love to see more of these characters pop up and shit. Like, maybe have a rock and roll racing character that drives, like, a, uh, a fucking, uh, blah, 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 my brain... Like one of those big racing cars, one of those beasts from uh, Rock and Roll Racing. And have them be a character in Heroes of the Storm. And they just ride around. Like you could have speed boost shit. Or they could go at the same speed as like Sergeant Hammer or something. Like we have vehicle characters so it's not a big deal. And then like Blackthorn would be really cool. Like he's not super powered but let's be honest. Some of the fights in Heroes of the Storm aren't exactly like one to one. <laughs> like they don't. They would not go out there. I don't think, like, fucking Deckard Kane could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Diablo, you know, considering spoilers, Diablo 3, uh, he get, kind of gets knocked out by a goober boss. Um, but this is a really awesome collection, and if you have $15 and you really love retro games or you're really into, like, gaming history, like, in general... It has some awesome bonus features with, like, video of a lot of the people that were there way, way back in the day at the start of the company and, like, stuff they went through and just cool little design choices and things they did because they were constrained by the technology of the time or the technology that they had. And there's, like, a cool little music soundtrack thing. There's a music player. It doesn't have a ton of music, but it has some from Lost Vikings and from Blackthorn. And I think they retroactively added RPM Racing back or into this i don't think that was originally part of the collection it was kind of like a prototype of what rock and roll racing like came out to be uh and it was really bad and apparently they used it as like uh they used like the high res mode on the super nintendo which apparently if you're using the high res mode you are allotted like less pixels within like a cell of like the the like animation or background or whatever which means that you don't have as many that you can copy and paste for, like, background elements and things. So they in-house, like, made the joke that it was, like, the game was high-res grass. Because the background that they used was just plain green grass that looks like old Windows grass, like, animation. And it's, it's weird because it, like, itches this very specific, like, uh... Very specific, like, aesthetic thing in my brain that makes me think of, like, Vaporwave or something with, like, little toy cars out in the yard or something. Uh, and then Rock and Roll Racing just feels like Warcraft 2 art style and, like, racing. And it's so much fun. My favorite part, honestly, was all of the behind-the-scenes videos and the um, concept art and design document stuff that they show in this little collection. And it's only $15.00. And it's really cool, like, retro shit. So, like, uh, like I said, if you like retro games or you're really into, like, gaming history, 
It's only $15. I think it's worth that. And it's definitely worth it if it goes on sale on your platform of choice. I'm pretty sure it's on the PlayStation 4 and upward, the Xbox One and upward, uh, PC, obviously, on the uh, Blizzard Launcher, and on Switch. So if you're into any of that shit, I would definitely check it out. Uh, bye bye